I'm back on, on live. I sent an invite to Wendell, so he should be able to. Wendell, if you can see that. Okay, Wendell, I sent you the invite. So you're going to have to accept it. Okay, well, I don't know. Guys, I don't know. I had gotten a message that he, there he is. He's joining. Good morning, Wendell. Oh, hold on. I can't hear you. You got your volume on? Yeah. Oh, now I can. How's it going? It's going good. Great okay. morning to you. Yes. I just you. took the opportunity to kind of let the world know what's going on with me. Oh, okay. Nice. This morning with the staff and whatever, whatever. But hey, I'm in great spirits and uh, I see Absolutely. you're in great spirits too. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so how's it going? That's going good. Today is going to be my first day of training there, so I'll be heading out in like uh, an hour, 45 minutes. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. So listen, we we're going to do something about uh, Q&A with people, right? A Q and A with um, with men versus women. So I'd really like for you to kind of elaborate on that, kind of give us a focus so that the everybody watching also can know how it's gonna, how your idea of how it's gonna function is gonna go, so that they okay. can get their questions in, or if we're gonna do it live questions or. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So I'll give you the floor. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So. Um... So as Toby mentioned, uh, we were discussing um, this new idea that we had. Well, actually, it was an original idea that I've had for quite some time now. So I'll just explain exactly where it stems from. Um, I have two daughters. So my daughters, um, my youngest one, she just started um, dating, if you want to call it that. <laughs> and, um, you know, she was asking a bunch of questions as to what she should be looking for and that sort of thing. And uh, she actually ended up uh, being heartbroken by this person. So it's, excuse me, it was kind of sad, but in a sense, it was kind of good too, because um, I believe that sometimes in your life, you have to go through that right away, just so that you can, you know, get over it, you know? Not when, when I say get over it, I don't mean like get over it and forget it, but I mean, you know, that you can actually experience it because in order for you to know what your heart wants, sometimes you have to have a broken heart first, just so you know the limitation of your heart, right? So um, I'm a strong believer that, you know, when we were growing up, you know, and when, when it comes to dating especially, we're never taught how to date, we're never taught how to love, we're never taught how to find that right person, right? You know. Your moms always tell you, you know, find somebody that'll treat you right, you know. But now somebody who treats you right may not love you. They just want to treat you right. You know, find somebody who cares about you. You know, somebody will care for you, but doesn't mean that that person will love you, right? That's right. Then you also have people that love you, but they don't care for you, if that makes any sense, you know. Oh, it does. Perfect sense. You know, you would think that love and care is working hand in hand, but sometimes it doesn't, right? Or Can I mention work. something on that? Absolutely. Because what you have to see is if the person loves you for who you are or if they love what you do for them. Right. There we go. Back to you. <laughs> okay. That's, that's our, thanks for clarifying that. So, um, and also I've taught, like, I have a lot of, female friends, right? So, you know, my female friends would call me with issues with their man situation, right? And, you know, the thing that I noticed that kept coming up was they kept saying, you know, I, I wish I can understand why they do what they do, you know? And then I started having conversation with some men, well, my guy friends, and they were like, oh, like, why are these women so emotional? And 
why do I have to deal with this and why, why, why? So, so then I, I came to the conclusion that there's a gap here, you know, one wants to know why the other one is doing this. This one wants to know why that one's doing that. You know, nobody's taking the time to just sit down and say, well, you know what? Let's try to figure this out because it's so much easier for people to be like, you know what? I don't think this is going to work. And they just pass out. They just peace out. Right. For sure. And you try to ask them, you know, well, why isn't it? Work? Oh, it's just, it's just not working, you know? And I'm the type of person that not that I need validation, but I need a legitimate answer as to why you mm -hmm. want to walk out the door. You know, yep. I've invested two, three years of my time into this, right? And you just want to walk out the door like it's nothing. Like that's I I, you, I take that as an offense, and I'm sure some most people would. But, For sure. Um, okay. So but you see, this is also too when things like that happen. It's never at that moment. It's an accumulation of all of the small exactly. things over time that there was no communication. Exactly. Or there was communication and it wasn't reciprocated. Everybody's searching to fulfill a need within exactly. themselves. And exactly. you see, we do it by trying to entangle ourselves with people, right? Yeah. For interactions and things like that. But I think the huge problem that stems is we've forgotten how to, well, not even forgotten because we were never taught to. Right. If everybody loved themselves wholeheartedly first, and understood that concept of infinite unconditional love because we've been taught to love with conditions yeah that is true and unconditional love has no conditions so if we loved ourselves primarily first unconditionally there's a lot less that we would accept for ourselves absolutely i'm prime example of that if i would have nobody taught me how to love myself but what have I looked for in men all my life? Well, what did I model growing up? My father was the example of the man, the type of man that I needed to look for. That has been destructive for me over and over and over and over and over again. Why? Because I realize now, oh boy, I have a huge thing to heal when it comes to my dad. But this is also why I haven't had one healthy relationship in my life. But I understand that. Mm -hmm. See, so that's where it can be worked with, where a lot of people, right. they don't want to look at themselves. That's right. They want to blame the other. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's not right. No, it's not. And um, one, of the things, one of the things that I picked up on a lot, which is kind of reflective to... How I started getting into coaching as well was, you know, I'd ask them, you know, so what is it you look for in a person? You know, like guys and men and women, I'm like, what is it that you look for in a person? And they said, oh, well, you know, I want somebody who's going to take care of me. I want somebody who's caring. I want somebody who's emotional. I want somebody who can communicate. And I'm thinking, and I'm like, okay, but these are tangibles, right? So, like, basically, and then when, when they asked me, I flip the script on them, you know? So they say, well, what are you looking for in a person? I'm like, honestly, I'm looking for somebody with a good heart. And then they're like, that's it? I'm like, well, yeah, because if somebody has a good heart, then everything else is yeah. beautiful, right? Yeah. Because it, it doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter how they think. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter about anything other than their good intention to care about you. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when you're used to people, or sorry, used to dating people, who take advantage of you or you know most of these people who end up in abusive relationships you know sometimes this is what happens is that they look at specific qualities and they don't match the qualities so i'll give you an example so uh, one of my friends was like oh my gosh you know i, li I like blonde men that with blue piercing eyes and sturdy and strong and you know physical and you know i like them a little bit aggressive so i'm like mm you know what, like, you might want to look at that because when I break that down, I'm seeing an abusive person, I'm seeing a controlling person, I'm seeing like, you know, yeah. so a lot of people have misconstrue what those qualities are. Yes, they're attractive. Anybody could be attractive, right? But um, at the end of the day, you just need to look a little bit more closely as to what it is you're looking for in a person and yeah. go in, inside because on the outside. Yep. Yeah. 
It's true. And also, too, I'd like to add to that, too. We've got to look back and see what type of people did we model and what type of relationships did we model growing up and what are our basis of the paradigm of relationships for us? Because I know personally I can speak on it. Growing up how I grew up, there were no healthy interactions. There were, I, you know, very few healthy interactions ever in my life around me. Right. And that's why school became my family and my friends at school became my family. And yeah. ex be, yeah. like, yes, my family's great. I love them. But yeah. I'm talking about interactions here. Yeah. And yeah. how do we see people yeah. treating each other? And what is acceptable to treat, like, and what do we see our parents doing? And what are the relationship there? And how did we model a lot of that? Yeah. And we don't, people don't look at it like that. But that, that's where you can tell if somebody still stuck in the just me paradigm or right. are they actually evolved to a point where, hey, my choices and my love for myself and others affects every single buddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, then it's a different step because I'll tell you, being an empath is very hard for me on that realm. And that's right. why I stayed alone for 20 years, honestly, because what I see in a person is not what they see. And I see the love and the energy of that being yeah. so all of the faults that come with it that's not what i focus on ever because i always believe in my heart that love's gonna win and love's gonna heal right mm -hmm. so whatever comes at me i'm like okay let's let's do it but this this interaction i'm having now in my life yes it's very very um profound yeah so very profound this. But I'll so, be yeah. very honest with you, this experience I needed for learning. Right. Had I not had this experience during everything that I'm going through right now, mm -hmm. I think this hardness of this experience has fueled more love in me, more learning for myself, and instead of me sitting here outwardly going uh the you 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 it's really caused me to go how is this making you feel you know because when you see somebody as love and light you accept everything else no matter you know but then it comes to a point where you've got to kind of say hey how is this making me feel and usually by the time I take that time to look inside to say, hey, what is this doing to me? It's already taken quite a lot away from me. Yeah, I got it. So yeah. this kind of topics I really want to get into because people, you're right, they need it. They need it. They need it. And yeah. hopefully we can kind of like, yeah, everybody wants the perfect partner, but are they themselves being that perfect partner? Yeah, because I'm gonna say something um, like not on a, I mean, because that it is part, it is partially therapeutic, but you know, some people think that. Um, okay, so I'll give you I'll give you another example. So, you know, you date somebody and you know everything's going good. You know, you think okay, you know what? Now I'm ready to go all in because we're, we're always hesitant to go all in right off the yes. right off the hop, right? Yes. We gotta make sure that. You know, we're checking the water, you know, we're tipping our toe in, you know, we're looking to see if there's any sharks in there, you know. Yeah, because we're, <laughs> we're thinking looking... instead of feeling. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, so now we go into this thing now and all of a sudden you realize that you're becoming drained. Yes. In the yes. relationship, right? Yes. And Can I tell you why? Healthy. Can I tell you why that happened? Because you're putting too much effort into it, I would think. No. What it is, is you're being loving. You're pushing out the right energy. And because every interaction is transactional, what that, what is that person giving you back energetically? 
That's what, ca that's what makes the difference, whether they're boosting you or draining you, because everything's interactional, right? Uh, it's transactional. That's what I mean. So, yeah. Yeah. like, I'll be honest with you, energetically, I love speaking with you because there's a, a positive transaction. You know what I mean? And I feel open yeah, to I speak mean. with you about anything. Yeah. So, I'm the same. us speaking, yeah. communicating, could never in a million years drain me no matter what we're speaking about you see right. it's a healthy yes. communication but yes. there are some people that you try to even talk to and they're very standoffish closed stuck in their belief systems you're too much Very for good. them yep. they don't want to yep. hear you that's yep. what's draining to you because you're giving them goodness they're projecting negativity back onto you this is what you're absorbing that's what's draining you because it's taken right. away from your well-being right but what i'm saying is what we've been taught in the relationships yeah. like for years ago was that you know if you really care about this person you're gonna have to try and take that on right but the reality is that we don't right you're right because um we we have to we have to accept as much as we give that's yes. what i'm thinking it's like it's a you know it's a 50 50 thing right so there were some relationships that I were in where, you know, I saw them giving me 50%. So I said, okay, I'm just going to give them their 50%. And when I give them the 50%, then they're like, oh, well, how come you're only giving me 50%? I'm like, well, I'm giving you what you give me. And they're like, well, no, the man is supposed to give more than the woman. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I don't know where you heard that one from. No. But, you know, Partnerships are 50-50. Yeah, 50-50, you know. And that was another argument that we had like a while ago too. Like I posted on, I think I posted this on Facebook maybe months, a couple months ago. And uh, you know, a lot of a lot of women were saying that it's not actually fifty fifty; it's fifty one forty nine. You know, so I'm like, well, what's with that one percent extra, right? Like, what's what's that about? You know? And then they're like, oh well, I'm not gonna go all in unless the person absolutely shows me like that one percent more than me so that i know that that's the person that i should be going in with so i said okay now this is not a this is not a, a factual thing this is all based on your past and your perception you know exactly so maybe you are the type of person that you're going to go in with somebody who's going to give you 51 while you give 49 but me personally like i found that that's what I was doing at the beginning. I was taking that 51 and 49, and then it started turning into 60, 40, then it went to 75, 25, then 80, 20, then 90, 10, and then it's like, okay, you know what? Like, peace out, you know? I don't have time for this, right? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you feel me now, you know, you understand what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Oh so, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. So, so I'm saying that- by And the that's time what you get to that codependent point, relationships become where one person is carrying all the weight and the other person is kicking back, doing nothing, reaping all the benefits and projecting negativity. So that's why that person gets drained. Yeah. But also too, like, you know, and I think I, I think I told you this a little bit before in our, either our first discussion or through our messaging was that <clears throat> I'm a strong believer. Like I've never, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm a strong believer that, this whole concept, like, you know, the whole marriage thing, you know, I think that it needs to be reevaluated and maybe reworded a little bit. I know it's kind of, um, it's kind of, it's kind of barbaric for me to say this, but, you know, I just think like. Say it, I love it. I love it. Especially when you say that to bring open it, I'm like, yeah, I want to hear it. <laughs> so, so it's kind of like, you know, um, um, you know, it's like from death for till death do us part, right? For example, you know. Yeah, but is that, that until be... death of the old self, or death of the physical being, or death of like what is that? What is that? Because I'll tell you something. Till death do us part for me could mean hey, till I decide to evolve into a better being. <laughs> death of my That's old true. self. You know. That's right. <laughs> But I'm saying, if you look at, um, if you look at, it's not so much, it's not so much apparent in Canada. I mean, it, it might be, but in the States, it's, I've, I've, I've done some research and it's just ridiculous in the States. So it's like, 
it, in order for in order for you to, <clears throat> excuse me in order for you to work in a marriage you know they say oh i got to get out of this marriage right so rather than working and put it, fixing the marriage it's easier for them to say well if it's till death do us part then the only way that i can part with this person is by invoking death onto them right so when you look at these uh and and this has been apparent in the states like you know you see yes. these yes. guys who kill their wives and kids like yes like it's nothing because yes. they they don't understand what a marriage is they think that they're doing what the law states the law states till death do us part so if i can't yes. part with this person there has to be death involved whether yes. it be her getting sick whether her getting killed but if i kill her you know what i mean so yeah. i think that part needs to ver like that part absolutely either needs to be taken out or it needs to be rewarded in a different way because a lot of people miss they misinterpret that as yeah. you know like how you broke it down there just before you know it's that's basically what it is it's like you're starting a new life with someone yeah. right? because what so, happens honestly can i just elaborate a little bit what yeah. happens in any relationship when two people come together you either merge or you repel, okay? And now you guys can grow together every day or you grow apart every day. And that's just the way it works. So yeah. if two people can't respect and love each other enough and be honest with themselves primarily enough to maintain the growth together, because together two people can get through anything if the fundamental basis right. is love, simple. Because along with love comes the trust, comes respect, comes everything, right? Yeah. So yeah. every day is a brand new day, right? So we get up, right. if we're in a relationship, now you're either merging your energies or you're repelling them. And yeah. you will get to a point if you're not, okay, Zulu, please stop. Um, you're going to get to a point where you've created so much distance between the two people that the mm -hmm. fire is no longer there so what happens right. is yes you could love the person still of course because you guys have shared life with each other but there comes a point that you have to honor and respect yourself enough and love yourself enough to realize that okay it, even if you've been together a year you have not grown together with this person. Yes, there was major learning. Yes, there was all kinds of situations that had made you guys better beings possibly, but you can't speak right. for the other person. The only thing that you can honor is the fact that there's way too much distance to even try, you know? So th at that point, people need to let each other go for to room, to grow, to breathe, to better themselves. Because that's what happened. They chose not to maintain the bond. So when it's yeah. like, like I like to say it like this. Hey, when there's coals on a campfire, it's easy to throw a log on if you want the flame, right? But you can't wait until there's dead ashes to try to throw a log on and expect the fire it doesn't work so yeah. you have ample opportunity from when the fire goes out mm -hmm. before the coals die right now right. during that time you can gather your breath throw it on you can gather anything to keep that coal going yeah. for the possibility yeah. of a fire or you can right. let them die but once you've let them die, that is a choice that has been made. Yeah. Right? No, right. And that creates distance between two individuals. When it's at that point, it's past any kind of repair. And people need to, listen, you let it get to this point. Now you got to let each other free. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's exactly a perfect analogy because it's easier to just pick up that bucket and just throw water on it than it is to, you know, fan it to try to get that flavor. That's away. right. So, absolutely. That's a perfect analogy, actually. I really believe in people when, with relationships. Yeah, we all have dirt, 
okay? We all have dirt. But if you're going to allow somebody into your 12 foot of energy space, well, there are going to be effects of that. And they're either going to be empowering to you or destroying to you. It's as simple as that. They don't, you know, and we can, listen, we hang on to things. Why? Because it's better to be in a bad, fucked up relationship and not feel alone than to say, hey, let me do this alone. That's why women get stuck in all these fucked up relationships. I agree with you to it. Yeah, I agree with you to a certain degree, but I mean, okay, I want you to share. For the most part, <laughs> the for the most part, I agree with you. Um, but the thing with that is that I think that it also depends on what that person was exposed to prior. Yes. Right? So I'll give you an example. You know, you have some people that you know were were damaged or you know violated when they were younger. So when it yeah. comes to like, you know, trying to commit to that person. You know, there's that fear still. Of so course. once that fear is still there and they're by themselves, then now they become dependent or needy. They have to be with somebody. So they don't care what that person is. They don't care what that person does. They just need to be with some, with that somebody. And I think that's the main reason when I talk to people, you know, who's been in abusive relationships and ask them, I said, well, why are you staying there? They're like, oh, well, you know, nobody else is going to love me. And, you know, and it's not like he's trying to kill me. I'm just like, okay. So, so th- that's where I, that's where I get the conclusion mm-hmm. that they're stuck in a in a comfort zone. Like, yeah. Believe it or not, you yeah. know. But they're comfortable yeah. because yeah. of the fact that yeah. they know how to cope with it. They found a way to guaranteed cope with it and guaranteed. use it as, as whatever their their. I don't want to say their benefit because there really is no benefit, but they use it to the to the positive. They take the positive out of it, right? They just say, "Oh well, at least he's motivating me, or at least at least I feel secure because if he does that, that means that he cares about me." Or you are one thousand percent right, Wendell. And why I tell you that is, I will speak proudly about me this morning in that same bunk. Listen, why I can handle. An unhealthy relationship is because hell is my comfort. Why? Because I was born into hell, molested very young, ripped away from all of my... Listen, yeah, four years old, I was raped. Simple, okay? And it didn't just happen once. Okay, so yeah. You know what? Why do I allow... People that are unhealthy for me because people are still stuck in who they are. Now, people have to realize, are they dating from trauma or are they dating from love for themselves? Exactly. Okay. And I stayed alone for a very, very long time because I couldn't face that. And I couldn't face the fact that, yes, hell was my comfortable spot. And I've had to recently say, okay, why do I accept all of this shit for myself? Why? Because hell is my comfort. And yes, the man that I'm with, he thinks he loves me very much. But if he can't feel love, how can he love me? Simple. You know, yeah, so I think the, and this is something else that I wanted to say about men and women, you know, it's like men feel things differently. Women feel yes. things differently, right? So, you know, a lot of women have a tendency of, you know, if a man is quiet, you know, they think, oh, well, he doesn't listen to me or he's not paying attention to me or he doesn't care, right? But this is how we process things. Yeah, so internalize in a situation, it all. Sorry? Internalizing it all. Exactly. You know, because, you know, the man bravado is to not show your emotions. So when there people you go. think like, oh, you know, men don't show emotions. Yeah, we show emotions. We just don't do it in front of you, you know? It's like, <laughs> we show emotion. But it's just that, you know, some men, like, especially the ones who are like, I don't want to say cocky, but overconfident, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, Overconfidence can be a good thing, 
yeah. if it's looked at in a different way. If you're sure. what I'm trying to say. Oh, for sure. You know, pe people get like uncomfortable because they're like, oh, he think he thinks he's he's all that or whatever. That's but just because they, they don't, don't feel good about themselves. We should be empowering people to feel empowered and feel great and yes, stand right. up tall and right. strong and you know, right. that's not right. being no, it's not. Okay, and also, Sorry. like, you know, maybe, no, it's okay. And, um, like, you know, you know, sometimes people feel like, like maybe he struggled with insecurity or shyness or whatever. And this is how he copes with it. This is mm -hmm. how he deals with it. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you just gotta, <laughs> you know, leave them alone and let them, you know, do what they do, whatever it is they gotta do. Because you, what you're doing now is now you're impeding on his healing if that's what he's doing. Or maybe you should just go and ask him and just say, like, why are you acting this way? You know, guys, will, I, we, we open up and say stuff like, oh, no, I we're know, straight. I know. We're but straight. I'll tell you, the, the, the man that I'm with is a great guy. I'm not going to lie. Listen, I'm not going to shut him down. He's not. He is a great guy, but he has lived an equally traumatized life as I have. OK, even more so, maybe, I believe, because. But I see that being an empath. This is where my struggle is. Because so, I'm an empath. Think, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, this is another thing too with relationships. Like people think that, you know, opposites attract. No. Because of a feather flock together kind of thing. So there has to be some kind of commonality, but then there's also got to be some kind of extreme difference between the two. So, so it seems but, like you are more on the, you know, because you're both in, in the same thing. So it seems more like you're on a common common ground. Kind of thing. Yeah, so well, the thing is, is we're both very traumatized beings. Yeah. This is where I can be real with it. We're two traumatized beings trying to love each other in a healthy manner. <laughs> okay? Yeah, that's a challenge. It is a that's very a big challenge. But we've been successful. And uh, so far, and we'll continue because I, I, I don't give up, right? You know, I, I see what it's done to me. I see, but I also see how it's benefited the whole family. It all like my interactions. So, yes, it's very hard for the both of us, extremely excruciating, so but the benefits of it. For everybody around us, the environmental yes. factor has been huge. Have you That's... both? Um, yeah. So have you both like? Have you both done your your healing separately, or you're trying to heal together? Well, like, I know that I'm. I know that I'm still on a. I have to heal a lot from my past, and he's only now enlightened to the fact that it's healing that needs to be done for so you see as well? we're on pardon you're saying for him or he's accepting that you the healing for you, you, you well no you, because you, he's you. still resistant to his own healing oh okay so he's 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 not in accepting the fact that he needs to do that no he doesn't want to face it he doesn't want to have to do it he wants to just yeah. leave it alone and that's what's created major space between us. Seriously, so because I'm on this, I need to heal. And yeah. I need to be very yes. proactive in this. But he, he is, he's acceptant of who he is, which is fine. He's happy with who he is, and that's who he wants to be. So right there, well, then if that's the case, then okay, where, where do we, we evolve together? It doesn't happen yeah. because so he like, wants to stay there. Whereas I want to evolve as a being. So it doesn't work because when one's evolving, but one wants to remain stuck, it doesn't work. Yeah, you have to be on the same page. So he's kind of like, um, he's giving me the impression that he's like, you know, the that value, you know, that vase, mom, grandma's vase that broke, all the pieces are on the floor. You can't find the glue. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to sweep those pieces away because there's some value to them, right? So yeah. So you just got to find the glue, stick them back together, 
and then yeah. put it back on the shelf. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. As good as it, it may not be as good as it was at the beginning, but at least it's still there. Actually, it's a lot better because you've infused the love into it to make it a masterpiece once again. So it's okay. not only, okay, yeah, okay, it was broken, but your love for that, put it back together. You know, right. and yeah. that's very possible for anybody, but they have to want it for themselves. You can't force feed oh, yeah. that to another. You know, and that's that was my biggest problem, and that's what the biggest hardship in this relationship is, and that's why I feel like the coals of the campfire have gone out, is because I am too real. I don't make excuses for stuff. I find reasons to be a better being. Yeah. Well, well, you're a good person. You have good energy, so that's... Well, you are too, me, Wendell. You know. So how are we going to do this question in A? How are we going to put this out to the world? Should they be asking, sending us their questions? Or how do you want to do this? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think that you 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 can kind of send a, a, a message out and just say, hey, we're doing a Q&A. You know, um, uh, we're going to answer your questions as honestly as possible. Not as honestly. We're going to answer them honestly. and. Um, I, I'll tell them straight up, you guys, all of you guys that are listening right now and that are that are going to watch this video, you guys all know, ask me whatever. Just be prepared for your response because I'm <laughs> yeah. a truth teller yeah. and I don't put sugar on anything. So you guys, send your questions in. Okay, you want real talk? Send in some real questions and you'll get some real answers. All right? That's right. We're here to better the world. We're here to better you guys. Help us be better beings. It all is, it all connects. We're all connected. Okay. We're taking the time here to help. So please let us help. Send us your opinions. Send us your questions. All right. I know you guys, listen, there's about 300 people checking these videos. Okay. And that's the start of it. I want you guys to share this stuff. Send the questions. Wendell and I are going to answer them. Yep. We definitely will. Honestly and wholeheartedly. <laughs> yes. There's no other way to be. There's no other way. There's no other way. So, yeah. So, I think that'll I think that'll work. So, we just kind of go through them and then, you know, we'll just have a, you know, ask Wendell or, you know, ask Toby kind of thing, you know. Or ask us both and see what both opinions both, yeah. would be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Man and you know? yes, right? Man perspective, woman perspective. Yeah. And so, I um, want to also, I don't know how you feel about this, but I wanted to invite whoever wants to join us live. If they want to sure. jump on and question us, like sure. hot seat yeah, questions kind of yeah. deal. If people want to jump on and say, all right, Toby, blah, 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 answer it. 30 seconds. Wendell, blah, 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 you know? Yeah, I encourage people I think, to do that too. Yeah, and I think that's going to be very interesting because this was the this was the main thing that I was looking at with the man versus woman thing was that you know there might be some times where you're going to get conflict and it's going to get a oh, little for sure. crazy, right? For sure, so but it's going to be fun. You warned that, right? Because sometimes so for the for the most part, it's real and it's right yes. there, right? Yeah. So and this is what people like. People are like, oh my gosh, what's going on over there? Like you know, I went on. I went on Wendell and Toby's uh, video there, and oh my gosh, like they were they were just going at each other, kind of thing. It's right? a hot not... talks, <laughs> <laughs> but not in like a negative sense where we're disrespecting each other or anything, right? Like oh yeah, no, but gonna... listen, you know what? I love I love that you are as secure in your being as I am, and this is yeah. why this is going to be so great. But we yeah. haven't really had a chance because over the weekend I was dealing with absorbing all of this yeah. medical news and stuff, but I'm back in full effect yeah, ready to do this and i don't plan on giving up or cashing out anytime soon you know yeah. what i mean yeah. so yeah again i'm going to heal whatever's going on with me i'm meant to be here for a reason and i'm meant to yeah. be on this live with you so yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i gotta I Wendell, I wish you a wonderful here. day. So listen, I'm going to give yes, you the floor to, to say, to send out a message to these people that are listening. 
Okay. You know, because I'll do a wrap up once you hop up, like I'll, you know, what I'll tell them all whatever. But I want you to have the floor for a couple of minutes before you get off. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sure all of you have uh, pretty much listened and heard what we were discussing today. So I think what I would like for everybody to get out of this is that, um, you know, you're going to feel a certain way about somebody and you're going to, you, you, your first intention is that you want to be happy with this person. You want to, you know, have a long-term relationship. This is, this, this is if you actually want to have a long-term relationship, right? So, you know, it's very important that you look at the person's heart. Instead of looking at what they do and what they're driving, what they're wearing, you know, yes, people say, oh, you know, I'm not materialistic. But when you really look at what you're looking for in a person, you start to realize that you're more materialistic than you think you are. So it's very important that, you know, you look at the intention of the person, you look at how the person treats others, mm -hmm. and also um, your ability to communicate on very various yeah. topics, you know? Yes. Like, don't keep your relationship on one track, you know? Like, there's a lot of people that, you know, I, I have friends that have, you know, they've been in not long-term relationships, but they're trying to maintain the relationship, but they're always talking about, you know, sexual stuff. They're always talking about, like, intimate stuff. And it's like, you got to broaden your conversation. You know, there's other things that you can talk about. You know, talk about what's your favorite movie? Why is it your favorite movie? You know, when you start having these kind of conversations, you're going to start seeing that. They'll be like, oh, well, remember that scene that this is this? And you're like, oh, well, I didn't know you even noticed that scene. So... I'm, the, I'm saying this as an example that, that it'll open up your mind to other channels, you know, for like, sure. Don't keep yourself narrow on one, you know, and also we've been taught to, to, to always have a checklist as to what's important in a person. I'm saying personally, we, sh there should be no checklist. It should be what you feel, right? It's what you see, what, what makes you, you know, like all the parts of the body needs to be like, you know, sensitivity, you know, uh, sensuality, intelligence. Um, we all crave to be touched. We all crave communication. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you want to be happy. You know, they can be comical. They don't have to be serious all the time. You know, or if yeah. you're into someone being serious all the time, then at least they're serious about, you know, very important topics, you know, <laughs> and positive topics. You know? So... So that's the best that I can, that's the best that I can pretty much come up with. So, you know, I'm really enjoying this uh, experience with Toby. You know, Toby's been, um, she's been opening up my mind to quite a bit, actually. And also she's given me some very, very good and needed practice in, you know, me doing this thing. Because again, I've been doing this thing for a while and I just always been talking to myself. You know, people think I'm crazy or whatever, but, you know, so it's like, you know, I talk now to I have. Too. Yeah, there you go. So now I have an avenue and now I have an audience, you know, thanks to Toby. I'm, I'm, I'm ever so grateful for her to give me this opportunity because I think this is how it's going to start growing eventually. And it's probably going to start, not probably, uh, most definitely it's going to start growing a lot faster than we anticipate. So we're yes. just trying to get ahead of the game here and get some practice in there so that once this thing starts blowing up, then at least we'll be able to, you know, handle it in a decent and you know, professional man. So thanks for all of you guys joining. Thanks for your, uh, you know, your comments. And, you know, I had a, actually, um, I wanted to touch base on this, you know, um, uh, for the past few days, I've been getting this like friend request, friend request, friend request. And I'm like, where are all these friend requests coming from? You know, and I'm Possibly looking at mine. where they are. Yeah. And the common Good. ground and the actual common ground comes to Miss Toby over here. So thank you so much. Toby, good. For, good, for good, good. I'm happy because, because you know what? I'm here. hoping that everybody on my friends list that will reach out to you Wendell you're a great guy you got a great insight and I think that you know what you're going to really help me get through to a lot of people and you've already you know what honestly I don't think you realize how you've already helped me also stay afloat because yeah because over the past couple of days with all this really disturbing news and stuff I needed to kind of figure out how I was going to get through it. And honestly, knowing that today's live was going to happen and focusing on that and, 
you letting me know that you you weren't judging it you were you know and i thank you for your patience with it that actually really motivated me to get my mindset right okay, okay so i gotta to thank that. you i gotta thank you all right that You're was welcome. really you see but this is where it comes down to i gotta stress to people we all need each other yeah you know yeah. we can't do this stuff yeah. alone and it's grueling work it's not easy to face all okay. of the things that you know yeah. we need to heal yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> and also pleasure. by the end of the week i'd like to get you up on the website okay so i, I just need a couple of pictures i need it i need a I couple said, pictures of yeah you you sent I it send, i did send yeah i did send it i sent it last okay time. good i didn't check my email this morning yeah okay so just check it and make sure that you got it and then you know, uh, if you want other yes. pictures or whatever, just send me yeah. a just send me a quick message to say, hey, you know, send me up more pictures or yeah, I got it, everything's good. Perfect. So yeah, I will confirm it. it. I will confirm it. Okay. Okay, great. So okay. Wendell, I wish you an awesome day. Get the you most too. out of your day. Love and light, my brother. Get Love a great day in. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks for joining this morning, and I'll see you tomorrow Bye. morning Bye. live. But when you're done your day, reach out to me and we'll figure out uh, how we'll do our Q&A tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get some okay. questions. You guys, send in your questions. And in send your them questions. to Wendell. Yes, send them send to them Wendell to and send them to me. You know? Yeah, hey, ladies, chat, if, you feel more, if you feel more comfortable asking uh, women questions, send them in. Guys, I encourage you, send your questions to Wendell. We don't have to say where the questions are coming. That's right. From, anonymous. Great but anonymous. we can give the Amazing. answers that'll help everybody. That's right. That's right. Very, All right, uh, actually, you know what? I am going to wrap up. We wrapped up pretty good. I don't need to stay on here longer than this. I love you all. Get the most out of your days. Love you all. Yep. All right. Love and light. Wendell, love have an light. amazing day. You Lots too, of loads. Loads of love to you, my brother. <laughs> Always in love to you too. All right. Peace. Have a great, great. day. Peace out. You too.